Hello everyone, welcome to Wildwood Studio. I'm Sarah, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a wood burning of a tiger. I'm burning this picture on an 11 by 14 inch cradled basswood panel, which is one of my larger ones, and man, did this take me forever. This is partly because I've been working at my job again, which has been great, but also means that I'm a lot less likely to come home from work and want to work on my burning. It's just the eternal struggle of turning off Netflix or YouTube to do something productive before it's 10 p.m. and I have to go to bed. So, this really did take me two months, but if I add up all the time that I worked on it consecutively, it's about 15 hours total, and that's not including prep time and sketching, which was probably another one to two hours. The photograph I'm working from in this burning was taken by Peter Martin, and he took it at the Toronto Zoo. He actually has a lot of great pictures of tigers, and this tiger in particular, I also really like tigers, so I'll probably do a couple more pictures of his of tigers. And I'm also thinking about doing a large painting of this one as well. Not this exact photo, but another pose of this same tiger. So you'll have to let me know if that gets boring. Also, I'm referring to the tiger as a him because I was at the zoo over the long weekend, which I guess was a while ago now, and I think this is their male Amur tiger, Vasily. And it's fun because while we were there, we were looking at him and he walked right up to the glass and got really close to us, which was pretty amazing, so now I think it's kind of fitting of me to make him my muse. Like I said, I've always been a fan of big cats and tigers in particular, so that's one of the other reasons that these photos made me really want to burn them in a good way. Like, turn them into art. I chose this picture in particular from all of Peter's tiger photos because I like pictures of animals that show a little personality, and I always think it's funny when big cats have a moment where they're behaving like a house cat. And just before I move on from talking about the photo itself, uh, if you want to see more of Peter's photographs, you can check him out on Instagram. I'll be linking to him in the description of this video. In terms of technique, this burning was sort of similar to the one I did of Tigger the Bengal cat because of the similar fur pattern, but the tiger is a lot shaggier than Tigger, so that also meant that it was quite different. I started out the whole thing by outlining all of the tiger's whiskers because I want to leave them white, and I find that faint outlines make that easier to do. I tried to keep these outlines thin and relatively light because I don't want them to be visible later on. Then I shaded the background a flat black. For this, I think the most important thing to do is keep the direction of the burning consistent so that the pen strokes don't visibly overlap and go all over the place and look messy. And also, as always, I tried not to create a hard edge between where the tiger meets the background because it's unrealistic and also he's supposed to look like he's sitting in the dark and not on top of a black sheet. The tiger's chest was a bit of a challenge for me because the hairs there are longer and I always have a bit of trouble with smooth, uninterrupted shading. So I ended up going over that part multiple times to even it out and make it look right before I was happy with it. Next, I'd like to talk about the bit around the paw that's on the ground out of frame, as well as the tiger's chin and the white fur around his face and the lighter fur on his paw. What these things all have in common is that they're all parts where the fur in front is lighter than what's behind it. So for these areas, I worked from the back forward and sort of shaped the white fur by shading what was around it, instead of shading the fur itself to make its shape. It's the same thing as the whiskers, but I feel like I was a little less successful there. Uh, more on that later. It's also important to remember that white fur has shading. This is also something I talked about with Tigger, and it's sometimes quite dark shading. I've seen a lot of people try burning pictures of white animals, and they don't have any dark values, but it is possible to make animals look like their fur is white without losing all depth and texture in the picture. One of the hardest things in realism is always drawing what you actually see and not what you think the picture should look like. And if the photograph you you've chosen of your all-white cat or dog really does have no shading or texture, then maybe pick a different one? Or just add some where you think it should be, just for interest's sake? I think it will make your burnings look both a lot more interesting and also more realistic. Another way to add depth to a picture is to change the level of detail. So I made the fur on top of his head smoother than what's on his face, which is supposed to be more in focus. I also did this with the arm versus the chest. There's a lot more texture and detail on the arm than on his chest, so it looks a bit closer to the viewer. In this burning, unlike what I usually do, I left his eyes and most of his facial features until last. And I was sort of happy that I did, because it was kind of fun to see it all pull together right there at the end. I'm really pleased with how his face turned out, especially the space between his eyes. I think the fur texture there was really important and also kind of confusing, but I'm really happy with it. And the final thing I did revolves around how my attempt to leave the whiskers white sort of failed, especially on the left side of his face. So the first thing I tried was to go back in with some sandpaper and try to get rid of where I had shaded over the whiskers. But when that failed, I just cheated and put the whiskers back in with a white colored pencil. 
Anyway, here's the finish burning. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram. Also, please make sure to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all my future art videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.